Welcome to jobskillshare.org. This is Danish. I'm making this video for two type of members. One, people who just kind of like, you know, want to know the fix for this issue. One is the members, basically, who want to know how do we do things in the real world environment and they want to see some real world scenarios. So here's it. Here's a scenario. This is a scenario based video where a uh, help desk basically sent me an email. I'm in a process of rebuilding a PC for a user. But when I try to install semantic endpoint, it said that it wasn't compatible with the version of Windows that I'm running. Do you know if there is any update clients that I could use? So basically, the 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 history behind this is that Semantic uh, is they pushed out some updates like recently because some of the you know that security thing that happened and one of their cl clients stopped working when people start updating like you know Windows and stuff like that. So they need to get the new uh, you know update out for Windows 10. So as a system administrator, when you're working in an environment. Uh, and you're dealing with multiple computers, you don't deal with one type of, uh, like a single base antivirus. You know, you don't put that on machines. You usually manage it through servers. And I have that in my help desk course. If you want to know more in details, you should take the help desk course. But in this case, I am going to show uh, basically communication, not like a communication, but this is kind of like between an IT and an IT, basically. And he, he knows that he can fix this, but he just needs an update. And my job is basically now to, provide that update. Now, of course, that is going to be done. Um, you know, I'm not going to show that, but that's what's going to happen. And it's going to be an email. I'm going to send that to him that, hey, I, I put it into this folder. Go ahead and try that on your in Windows 10 machine. And uh, that's it. But what is the issue? The issue is related to Semantic. And let's go ahead and open Semantic uh, server and let's create a new package. Okay. So while I was doing that, because I it took me so much time to kind of, you know, when you do, when you don't do things on a regular basis, you're going to get forget these things. And I've, I felt like I should record this for other people who can come to the same, you know, uh, scenario. First of all, you need to remember that you have to go to the semantic, uh, you know, the file connect where basically they put all their, uh, you know, downloads and everything. They also provide you a package which is kind of like when you have the client available, let's say if if this help this person, uh, you know, told me that, you know, okay, I have, let's say, for example, 12.1.5, uh, and then the version is like, let's say the build is 7600. I'm just making this up. And he's looking for a better version. I'll probably send him a link that you can directly download uh, and update, like a patch. And he could have run that. But in this case, he's running a fresh install on a on a Windows 10 machine and he can't really do the patch thing. So in Semantic specifically, you need to go to their site and you need to have your own license key. Now, of course, I cannot show you the license key, but you have to have your license key. When you work in your environment, you are going to get that. So when you click on File Connect, and if you don't know how to get here, just Google File Connect Semantic and you will get to this uh, page and then you will put your uh, you know like your license number which is probably going to be like m123 m256 whatever so you put that in there and then you are going to get to these files where you need to install this file which i'm going to show you right now this is the one that you need when you put your license key and you you click on connect you're going to come all the way down and then you're going to need this right here it says right here semantic endpoint protection 12.1.6 mp9 this is the latest one and then you will download this and extract it this is an exe file so when you double click on it it will extract it it will you will get another folder in that folder you will get a linux mac and uh, uh, windows 64 bit and 32 bit single installations meaning you can run that you can basically after this you can just give it to the person and they can run it but still it will not be kind of like a proper way because you need to actually create a package on the server and then that when the help desk run it on those machines it will automatically connect it now he could have simply run that on other machines but then it's a manual work i need to provide him more information like xml file or something like that to connect it back to my server and things like that so it's it's a pretty tedious job if if you have to go that way but you know this this is the way you can do it uh, uh, if you, if you are a system admin then what you will do you will install this you will download it extract it once you have the folder then you need to get to the packages folder i'm going to show you that in a second right now okay so right here this is the after the download you will see 
the folder like that. Now you, you are going to go inside the folder and then after that you will go to so once you get into this folder, after that, what you will need from a server, you'll log into your server, of course, in your semantic, you're going to log into your manager. And after that, you will double click on SEPM. And this is the packages that you will need. Now, what type of package you want to create, it basically depends on you. Uh, let's say, for example, you want to create um, a Windows 64-bit, um, then you're going to need the info this one right here. If you want to create a 32 bit, you're going to need this one. If you want to create, let's say, a Mac version, then you're going to use this right here. If you want to create a Linux, you can see right here there are the Debian and different ones right there. So in this case, um, I am creating the one that I need for uh, for this uh, Windows environment. And you can see right here. Now, this is where things can go a little tricky. If you're looking for the 12.1.6, and let's say you somehow you didn't whatever reason you got to the newer versions of license like you know where the 14th version then if you delete your license where do you actually really get that license first you can go to recover and then you'll see you will see your deleted um, license that are extremely important because that's what happened to me today i was looking for the 12.1.6 installation and i couldn't get it the one that i have here are all new so when i put that in the system like the file connect site they will always give me a 14th version so i never got the 12.1.6 one so then i went to recover my deleted license and that's where i got the license and i put it into that uh, uh sorry the site and then i got this these uh, uh applications right here okay so what do you do next then you need to click on packages so here i am going to right click here and then i'm going to go ahead and click on add and here i will name it something let's say for example like a 32 bit just for testing, I'm just gonna type it 32 bit. Um, let's call it a better name over here, which is 12.6 uh, number three. No. Okay, 12.1.6. Okay, so then uh, because this is a you know uh, an updated one, so then you can later on change that. To the new one i don't know exactly what number it is but this is testing so i'm gonna go ahead and click on browse in browse i'm gonna go ahead and go to the folder that i want to go get to desktop and this is right here and sepm and then packages and then packages i am going to click on sav32 info and then i'm going to click ok okay so see now this is creating a package but then after this another step would be to export it this is where you're helping the other, you know, IT teams where they are deploying that on our machines or you could be doing that for like yourself, maybe deploying it to another 300 machines. Then you need to export this package. You need to uh, go to make sure that, you know, whatever you want to pick here. So if you're default, then yes, that's default. If you already have a custom uh, ones built for you, then make sure you're, you're picking the correct one. If it's 64 bit, it will fail. If it's 32 bit, then that should work. And I'm going to pick 32 bit over here too. And now I'm going to go to my browser. I already created this folder. So you can create one or you can just let it create for you. And I'm going to create, click OK. And, and I'm going to click OK now. It, on the bottom, it tells you this is how much space it's going to be. So make sure your, your C drive have that much space or D drive, whatever you want to put this package so after this it should finish up and it should give us uh in an exe file for 32 bit just like 64 bit so this is it after this uh, you can simply give it to your help desk or maybe yourself you can deploy it through various tools you know you can use a pdq deploy that i showed in a help desk course on jobskillshare.org you can take the whole course learn all these skills there are so many different real-world scenarios just like this one. You can use that uh, or you can use the semantic manager itself. It has the ability to deploy it to other machines. It can also pick the machines that don't have antivirus and then it can push it out. So after this, I'm just going to show you the message that it, it's completed and then that's it for this real-world scenario. Now you can see that completely uh, completed successfully and then on the bottom you can see right there creating a single exe file so that's it that's all we need for this scenario thank you for watching jobscreenshare.org don't forget to subscribe for watching all these type of videos and also don't forget to share it and 
I will share more videos like this. If you like this video, make sure you comment and let me know what you think about this video.